Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome back to my Formulating for Beginners series. If you have not checked out this series, I highly recommend going back and watching all the videos in this series before you watch this one. I'll link down below to the playlist so you can binge watch them all. You especially need to watch part one of this video because this is part two. And this is the section of videos that I'm going to be getting in that is actually gonna be teaching you guys how to formulate. And I'm starting with very easy formulations the type of formulations that don't need preservatives. And typically those types of products are anhydrous products. And if you don't fully understand what anhydrous means, that means you need to go back and watch my last video, which is part one, which is titled Formulating Body Oils Part One, Choosing Your Ingredients and Percentages. In that video, I go into detail about what a body oil is, because before you go to actually formulate a product, you need to understand what the product is, what the product consists of, and what its purpose is. That's how you can understand what to actually put in a product when you go to formulate it. So today we are actually going to be formulating a body oil. But first we need to explain how to actually write a formula. So formulas are written in percents. Recipes are written in weight, specifically grams. Batch size is the amount of product you're making. So a formula starts written in percents. And when you go to actually make the product, you need to pick your batch size. And then from there, you create it into a recipe. You transfer the percents by using the batch amount to decide how much of each ingredient you need in order to write the recipe. And I'll be explaining how to do this later in the video. So since formulas are written in percents, it makes it really easy to transfer it to however much you wanna make, 100 grams, 50 grams, 1,025 grams. You can transfer it to any amount you want to make. And every time you write a formula, the formulation needs to add up to 100%. So you need to add up the percentages of all your ingredients and make sure it equals 100%. And then when you transfer it into a recipe, you need to add up all the grams of each ingredient and make sure it equals your batch size. So how do you know what ingredients to even put in a product? Well, that's why you need to watch my last video, choosing your ingredients and percentages. I discussed in the last video exactly what body oils are and what is found in body oils. That way you can narrow down exactly to what types of ingredients are used in body oils. So how do you know how much of each ingredient to use? You understand that they're written in percents, but how do I know if I need 5%, 10%, 20%? I understand that's confusing. The reason how you know is by checking the formulating guidelines that is supplied by your supplier. So there are websites like Lotion Crafter, Formulator Sample Shop, Make Your Own Dot Buzz, Making Cosmetics, and all these suppliers always have a recommended usage rate, a suggested usage rate, or a typical usage rate. And the ingredients that have typical usage rates are normally ingredients that can be used at X amount percentage to another X amount, like it's safe to be used at a larger percentage, but it's typically used at a smaller percentage. For example, the blueberry seed oil, I think I talked about it in my last video, it can be used at up to 100%. So its suggested usage rate is 1% to 100%, but its typical usage rate is 1% to 5%. So here's another example, vegetable glycerin. Its recommended usage rate is 1% to 5%. So that means you can use it anywhere between 1% and 5%. Depending on what type of product you are making will decide what percentage to use. So if I was making a moisturizing face wash, I would use it at 5% because I want as much moisturizing properties from the glycerin as possible. And that's why I want to use it at 5% in a face wash. But if I was making a facial serum, I would probably only use it at like two to 3% because vegetable glycerin can feel kind of sticky and facial serums are leave on products. Of course, you might like to use it at 5%, that's fine. But a lot of people would like it at a lower percentage so their skin doesn't feel sticky. So that's another way you can decide at what percentage to use. And you'll learn this by experimenting and just getting more knowledge of formulating through whatever means of uh, media or books that you use to learn how to formulate. But luckily suppliers do provide a lot of information on their ingredients. 
but sometimes suppliers can say things about an ingredient and that ingredient might not live up to those expectations. So you do always need to test out ingredients first to see what you think. Just because somebody else likes an ingredient doesn't mean you will. And just because you like an ingredient doesn't mean somebody else is going to. Everybody's different. So there are other ingredients like emulsifying wax and F that has a recommended usage rate of 2 to 25 percent, usually 3 to 5 percent in lotions, and 5 to 10 percent for creams. So some ingredients also have different recommended usage rates depending on what type of product you're making. And again, you'll learn what your sweet, sweet percentage is that you like by experimenting. So now that you understand all that foundation, the next thing you need to do is brainstorm what ingredients you want in your body oil. The first thing I do when I go to formulate something, I like to make a list of everything I want to put in that product, keeping in mind what benefits I want Want the product to have, what skin type it's for, and just the goal of the product itself. So we're going to be starting with a basic body oil first. And my basic body oil, again, go watch my last video if you're lost. My basic body oil is going to consist of a primary and a secondary oil. And my primary oil I want to use is meadow foam seed oil. I love this oil personally. It's very lightweight. It absorbs into the skin very easily. It's a lot like jojoba oil. So if you're familiar with jojoba oil, meadow foam seed oil is very similar. My secondary oil I want to use is baboba oil. This is a more expensive oil, which is why it's my secondary oil. And this has anti-aging benefits, which if you know me, I love my anti-aging products. So that's what I'm going to use, and I'm gonna use it at 10%. Another thing I wanna use is vitamin E oil. I discussed why I wanna use this in my last video, and I know I'm gonna be using vitamin E at anywhere between 0.5% to 2% because this, that's the suggested usage rate, and I wanna use it at 0.5% because it's a pretty expensive ingredient. And lastly, I want to use some fragrance, and you can use fragrance oil or essential oil, whichever one you feel comfortable using, and I typically use them at 0.5 to 1% because that's the sweet spot to get your product to smell great. Now I have all my percentages. We need to add up all of those percentages, which equals 11.5%. And remember, you want your formulation to equal 100%. So you want to take 100 and subtract 11.5, which equals 88.5. So now we know we need 88.5% of the meadow foam seed oil to finish off our formulation. It's that simple. So formulating is very easy when you are making something very simple. So here's what the formulation looks like that we have written out. Now let's figure out how to transfer this formulation into a recipe. And for this recipe, I want to make 30 grams because 30 grams fits into a one ounce bottle or one ounce jar. I know approximately one ounce in grams is actually 28.34, but we're rounding, okay? You can fit a full 30 grams in a bottle that's one ounce or a jar that's one ounce. But of course, this depends on how heavy your product is and all that stuff. Anyways, I'm rambling. Let's transfer this to a 30 gram batch. How you do this exactly? Listen up, because it's probably gonna get confusing if you hate math, because now we're bringing out the math. In order to do this, you need to take first the 88.5% and move the decimal point up two. So now we have 0.885. So you wanna multiply 30, which is our total batch amount, multiply 30 by 0.885, which equals 26.55. So we know we need 26.55 grams to make a 30 gram batch. Let's do it again with another number. Let's do 0.5% since this one's a little tricky. So move the decimal point up two spaces. So now we have 0.005. So now we need times 30 by 0.005, which equals 0.15 grams. So we need 0.15 grams of the vitamin E oil. Now this is just bull crap to you and you hate doing math. What you can do is literally just Google, what is 88.5% of 30? And you'll get your answer, you don't have to do the math. But I do recommend learning the math because if you're like me and your internet goes out all the time, you're stuck without the internet very often. So just a little tip if you hate math. So here is our batch amount. And I guess I'll just quickly make this for you guys to show you how to make it, which is super, super easy. So I'll just quickly show you. All you need to do is take the meadow foam seed oil, add in 26.55 grams, grab the baboba oil, add in 3 grams, some vitamin E oil, I added in 0.15 grams, and then 0.3 grams of whatever fragrance you want to use. And there you go. That's the basic body oil. It's super easy to make. Our 
right, now moving on to our advanced body oil. So the goal of the advanced body oil is to make it feel more dry and non-sticky and less greasy. So I know since this is more of a body oil that I want to feel dry, it's going to consist more primarily of those silicone alternatives I talked about in my last video and those emollient esters. So for the advanced body oil, I want to use Natricel and Cocoa Crap Relates, and I'm also going to be using some IPM. I talked about this in my last video. It's very, very good ingredient to make things feel less greasy. And as my, uh, I hesitate to call this a primary oil because technically it's not really an oil, but it is an oil. I'll talk more about this ingredient I'm about to mention in my next video. I'll go in more detail about it, but it's called Caprolic slash Capric triglyceride, okay? I'm gonna call it capric triglyceride. This is gonna be my primary oil. It's also known as fractionated coconut oil, but I'll talk more about this, like I said in my next video. I'll get into the deets about it. Um, anyways, this is gonna be my main oil because it's clear, and I'm I'm looking for clear ingredients, which I'll tell you why here in a minute. And it's very, very lightweight, doesn't feel heavy, greasy, sticky, all that good stuff. And that's what we're looking for in this advanced body oil. The other ingredient I wanna use is meadow foam seed oil because I love it. And um, of course I'm gonna use vitamin E oil. I wanna use 1% fragrance. And uh, as my secondary oil, I want to use blueberry seed oil. And I'm gonna use it at 5% because that's the typical usage rate. So the other goal of this body oil is to not only make it dry, but I want that green color from the blueberry seed oil to shine through. So that's why I'm sticking with these clear ingredients. Other than the meadow foam seed oil, which has a little bit of color to it, but I'm thinking it's enough that it's not gonna affect it. So like I said, when I formulate a recipe, I like to start off with the list of ingredients I wanna use, which I already did. Here's the list of ingredients I'm planning on using in my advanced body oil. So now I need to figure out the percentages. And I like to start with my ingredients that I already know right off the bat, the percentage. And typically those are the ingredients with the lower percentages. Um, so I know right away I'm using 0.5% vitamin E, I'm using 1% fragrance slash essential oil, whichever one you want to use, and 5% blueberry oil. So after that, I decided to use 5% IPM because its typical usage rates is 4 to 10% in massage oils, but I want to use it just a little bit above the least amount recommended, so I picked 5%. And then I'm going to use 10% Natricel, I'm going to use 20% Meadow Foam Seed Oil, and then I'm going to use 35% Capric Triglyceride. And then the last thing I want to use is the Cocoa Caprolates. So what I'm going to do is add up all the percentages I already have, subtract that from 100, and then I know I have 23.5% left of my formula, so I'm just going to use the rest of the formula. Coco Caprolate, 23.5%. So now I have all my percentages. And like I said, the goal of this body oil is to keep it dry, non-greasy, and I want it to be kind of clear. That way the green from the blueberry oil can shine through. This is the formulation for the advanced body oil, and we need to transfer it to a recipe now. So the recipe I wanna make for this advanced body oil is going to be 60 grams. And I want you guys to try transferring these percents to a recipe. The batch size is 60 grams. So go ahead and pause this video if you want. Try to transfer these percentages to grams. Remember your batch amount is 60. So pause it and try it out. So I don't know if you paused the video and actually did that, but let's move on. Here is the recipe. Our batch is 60 grams and here is everything written in grams. Now let's make this body oil. It's super easy, but I'll show you guys anyways. I started with 21 grams of capric triglyceride. 12 grams of meadow foam seed oil, 6 grams of Natricel. Here's the IPM. Sorry the container looks disgusting. I have no idea what happened to it. Oil must have got on it. Added in 3 grams of the IPM. Then I added in 14.1 grams of Cocoa Paprilli. Here's the blueberry seed oil. Look how beautiful and green it is. Just wanted to show you guys again. And I added in 3 grams of the blueberry seed oil. And I was an idiot and didn't grab a big enough beaker, so I had to pour it in a larger beaker. Then I added in 0.3 grams of vitamin E oil, and lastly, 0.6 grams of juniper berry oil. Mix everything together, grabbed a two ounce glass pump bottle, and there you go, that's the advanced blueberry body oil.
And that's basically the foundation of formulating body oils. I feel like this sounds a lot more confusing than it really is because I know there's a lot to unpack in this video, but trust me, it's really not that hard. I just had to break everything down into little bits and pieces, which makes things sound more confusing than they really are. But I really, really want this series to target those people who have no experience on formulating and really just can't even understand how to make a product at all or even what goes in the product. So that is my target audience with this series. So I really apologize if it seems way too elementary for you, which I totally understand, but this is for all the beginners who really just don't understand and need it, needs it broken down as much as possible. That's what this is for. So I apologize if you are more advanced and this is just, you know, simple to you. So with all that said, let's move on to my Patreon shoutouts. So first up, we have Stardust Bath and Body over on Instagram, Nature's Farm Girl at naturesfarmgirl.com, Kennedy's Essentials at kennedysessentials.net, Let's Blend at letsblend.bigcartel.com, Creative with Love at creativewithlove.me, Wallflower Wildflower at wallflowerwildflower.com, Heartfelt Beauty on YouTube if you want some more formulating videos, Sugared underscore Pineapple over on Instagram, KAJ Bath and Body over on Etsy, Blue Mint Soaps at bluemintsoaps.com, Saytara here on YouTube at Salt Air Label over on Instagram, Lanise Beauty at lanisebeauty.com, Ardrew Naturals at ardrewnaturals.com, Shark City at sharkcitynaturals.com, and sharkcitycbd.com. Also, we got Ohana Lay at ohanalay.com. And one more thing, if you guys didn't know, I do sell products myself over on Etsy. I'll have my Etsy shop linked down below along with all of my lovely patrons. So I do hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. My next video in this series is going to be all about facial oils. And I'm basically laying the foundation of what a facial oil is, what its purpose is, and what makes it different from body oils. That brings us to the end. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys next time. Later. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from I'm shattered in this life. It's still the path that I've chosen. Because I've had a vision, now I'm on a mission to find myself.